Pretty classic to be able to have your own museum, especially in a, in a country such as China. This NBA player conquered China. He went from making the McDonald's All-Star Game to becoming the first foreign model citizen of Beijing. Starring in the NBA All-Star Game to starring in a Chinese musical based on him. Some would say one of the greatest honors is becoming Mr. New York of basketball. Others would say it's having a statue or a museum all about you is even bigger. For Stefan Marbury, he can say that he's done both. This story is a very unusual rise to stardom. I watched and read from over a hundred different sources to find out how this all came about. And that's because my name is Rotomi. I love basketball. I love to talk basketball. And I hope one day you can share that same love for basketball as I. Stefan Xavier Marbury, or should I call him Starbury? went from an NBA all-star to a Chinese megastar. But before the stardom began, from the age of 11, many saw him as the next great New York point guard. New York is known for being the mecca of basketball. Basketball is very much embedded in the culture of New York streets. He grew up in a rough environment in Coney Island, and the only way that many people made it out was through rapping or sports. Marbury found his way in basketball. He would attend Abraham Lincoln High School, and it was there he would average 27, 8, and 3 steals a game. He was the next Mark Jackson, Kenny Anderson, Kenny the Jet Smith, New York legends that all made it to the NBA. During his senior year, he would rank as one of the top players in the nation. And due to this status, he would get selected to the USA Junior Olympic team. He would also make the McDonald's All-Star Game where his basketball would be on showcase to the rest of the nation. Marbury was part of this new wave of point guards, the ones that can score, they were flashy and they were athletic. His athleticism was special. He had a quick first step and that allowed him to beat traditionalist point guards such as John Stockton. After high school, continuing his approach to the NBA, he would land himself in D1 Georgia Tech. There he would play with Drew Barry and Matt Harping, two players that would eventually end up in the NBA. He would actually lead their team with 19 points and five assists and they would finish the season with a record of 24 and 12. They would make the regional semifinals of the NCAA tournament but they would have an early exit. Marbury would still make a name for himself and he would win 13 All-American honors. But after that one year in college, the question on everyone's mind was, is he better than Allen Iverson? Two unique point guards who were changing the game of basketball in front of everybody's eyes. Even though Allen Iverson was the favorite, Stefan Marbury still put himself forward for the draft. And among some legendary talent, Allen Iverson would go first, but Stefan would still go fourth, beating out Ray Allen, Kobe Bryant and Steve Nash all went on to become Hall of Famers. Side note, this is probably one of the most legendary drafts, if not many say the best draft of all time. Spoiler alert, Marbury is not a Hall of Famer, but he would still have a solid career. Once he got started, he made all rookie first team playing alongside the future Hall of Famer, Kevin Garnett. This season, he would average 16 and eight. He was the perfect piece to complement a second year Garnett who was still only one year removed from high school. The combination of the two was flashy, gritty and difficult to guard. The pairing looked like they were going to bring a championship to Minnesota and for the rest of their careers they were going to be a dynamic duo that would end up as legends in the NBA. So it would seem. During their time together Garnett was offered a huge contract. In fact it was the biggest of the time with 126 million dollars over six years and many speculated that Marbury was jealous. Now the jealousy didn't come from no reason. Marbury was also offered a contract the following year but due to rule changes he was offered less and he didn't quite understand. Marbury didn't get it. He was the guy who closed out their games. He was their point guard. He ran the show. This eventually did cause them to butt heads and after a few playoff appearances nothing could keep them together. So in the 1999 lockout season, he demanded a trade, landing himself in the New Jersey Nets. Luckily for him, he wanted to be closer to home and New Jersey did that. Whilst playing for New Jersey, he was an absolute terror on the court. He didn't need to share the rock, so it was just up to him to score. In his first complete season, he would average a career high of 23.9 points and get selected for his first All-Star game. But the Nets weren't a winning team and whilst his stardom started to grow, the negativity started to creep in. He would eventually get traded to the Suns and he would play there from 2001 to 2004, where success only lingered around during the regular season and faltered in the playoffs. He would still remain an all-star and get another all-NBA selection. But around this time, the hate was at an all-time high. For a very long time, I personally actually thought DMX and Stephon Marbury were the same people. 
Um, and then I grew up and realized they're two different people. They just look very much alike. So I guess maybe there was this, this idea that he was too hood for the NBA. Who knows? This persona did not work for him. In fact, he was actually woken up mid-sleep and told that he was traded and that he needed to get his stuff together and hop on the flight. But luckily for him, he was heading back to New York. This was a dream come true. Finally, he was back home where it all began. He knew where he was. He was safe. He was around his family again. What could go wrong? Well, that summer in 2004, it was the Olympics and he would get selected to play. Now, for many of you, you know what happened in 2004. This was the first time that the US team had lost since introducing NBA players to their Olympic team. They were the first team since then not to bring home a gold. They simply couldn't get the job done. And a lot of it was due to the friction on the team. A lot of reporters put the spotlight on Marbury's relationship with head coach Larry Brown. And to make matters worse, once they got back to the regular season, Larry Brown was hired to coach the Knicks. That was the beginning of the end. You know, I'm gonna try to focus on guys that care about our team. I just sat back and just took, I'm not taking it no more. The two would take jabs at each other in the media and the Knicks would continue to lose. Even though he was making $42 million, the Knicks didn't want to invest in the team around him. They were never built to win. You had a coach that didn't like the star player and then you had nothing around the star player for them to even play well enough to even win, give themselves a chance. His whole time in New York, negativity surrounded his career. Suddenly, the whole of New York turned on him. He wasn't seen as a team player. He got Larry Brown fired. He was apparently too much to handle. And eventually, home wasn't home. During this time, chaos would start to ensue around his career. He would also be taken to court after having an affair with staff on the team. And he even clashed with Isaiah Thomas, the president and coach of the New York Knicks, apparently coming to blows on a plane. He was done and things started to collapse around him. The Knicks would get rid of Isaiah Thomas, but also that year, his father passed away. Dealing with all the grieving and upset, Mike D'Antoni demoted him from his starter point guard role and suddenly he was a bench player on the Knicks. Learning this and hearing this, Marbury decided he wasn't gonna play. In fact, he would get banned for the following game. People started to say that Marbury went crazy. I mean, just look at these clips. <laughs> Take some Vaseline and swallow it. And it'll help you. After all the controversy and saying enough was enough, he agreed to a buyout in 2009, signing a one-year deal to play for the Boston Celtics. But after 23 games, he decided that he needed to take a step back from basketball completely. In 2010, Stefan decided that he wanted a fresh start, a chance to free himself from all the drama and chaos that surrounded him. During this time, he was extremely depressed and it didn't help that he was hit by a culture shock. He didn't speak the language, he had no friends, but he would say that this time alone was his time to heal. Basketball was all he knew and it was the only thing he could rely on to kind of raise his mood. In his first season, he would play for the Brave Dragons. During the 15 games, he was all-star calibre. And of course, yes, the Chinese Basketball League is not the NBA, but he was still averaging 23 and 10 with three steals. During his All-Star game, he would score 30 and dish out 10 assists, which made him the All-Star MVP. That was as far as success went with the first team, simply because they didn't make the playoffs. And although he signed a three-year deal with the Dragons, Marbury decided that he needed to compete, and he left in December 2010, where again he would gain All-Star status, but they weren't competitive enough to make the playoffs. So he moved again. After moving from team to team to team to team, it seemed like this was a pattern in his career. But this time, he had found a place to stay. A place that was going to make him a legend. The Beijing Ducks. In his first season there, the team would start out 13-0, which was a Chinese basketball record. This time, with the best of start, they would make the playoffs. He would match up against his former team, the Brave Dragons. And Marbury would average 45 points, winning the series. Taking them all the way to the finals, the Guangdong Southern Tigers, who actually had seven championships under their belt. So this was a finals matchup that everyone anticipated. The game would be close and winning by three points, Marbury became a Beijing hero. Following his championship and historic run, Beijing decided that they were gonna make a statue in honor of Stefan Marbury. The following season, he would win MVP, dismantling any team that came in his way. He had found a new home, not in New York, but in China, Beijing. It was in 2014 that he was named one of the top 10 model citizens of Beijing, which was the first time a foreigner had ever received this award. He had looked after this community with all of his charitable efforts embedding himself in Chinese culture and society. 
This was the same year a musical was based on his life, written and titled I Am Marbury. This wasn't a documentary, this wasn't a movie, no, they made a musical, an on-stage production in a different country, in a different language about you. Think about that. He had become an icon. In fact, his influence drew attention to the Chinese Basketball League. Players from all over the world saw how he achieved his stardom and they wanted to play there because of him. Following his first championship, he would bring two more in a back-to-back -back run in 2014 and in 2015, winning finals MVP along the way. His overall success with a sporting team and with the basketball made him a treasure to the city of Beijing. And with that, he was presented citizenship from the mayor of Beijing. Marbury had cemented his legacy in the CBA and more importantly, China. After initially retiring in 2017, he would return for a final game, playing for the Beijing Flying Dragons to conclude his career on a farewell tour. This would also be the same year that he would become part owner of the Beijing Lions football team. At this point, Stefan Marbury was highly respected and if he wanted to pull the right strings of influence, he could. Now we see Marbury continue to develop the CBA, whether it's in coaching or career development. Marbury say basketball saved his life, becoming the star of the CBA and becoming bigger than Chinese basketball. As a kid, Marbury dreamt of becoming an NBA superstar, but what he got was even better. He conquered China and became a Chinese megastar. Thank you very much guys for tuning in. It's currently 2.30 a.m. at the moment. I got to get out for work in about four and a half hours. And just seeing or knowing that someone got to the end of this video and subscribed or liked the video goes a long way and it makes nights like this worth it. So until next time.